Go ahead and hit record now. All right, wonderful. Well, welcome again, everyone. Uh, you are here for our Loyola Dorsey Community Resource Center virtual tour. Uh, this is our permanent supportive housing program over in Jessup, Maryland. And I'm going to first uh, do some quick introductions. Uh, my name is Nicole Granger. I'm the Executive Director of Fundraising and Development at Volunteers of America Chesapeake and Carolinas. Uh, I also manage the marketing at the organization and help put on tours like these. Uh, we also have Jennifer Dunson on the line. And Jennifer is a case manager that works at our Leola Dorsey property. Uh, so Jennifer, if, if you wouldn't mind just giving a brief uh, introduction of yourself and then and then we'll get started. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jennifer Dunson and I am a case manager over at the residences at Loyola Dorsey. Um, I work with all 35 of the wonderful folks that live there and I have been there for just over a year now. It's a pleasure to have you all. Thanks, Jennifer. And I see we have Kyle Lorton on the line as well, one of our fantastic board members. Kyle, how are you doing? Good morning. How are you, Nicole? I'm doing good. Since you're here, Kyle, uh, I wonder if you might give a brief introduction as well. Yes, I've been a board member of uh, VO, of Volunteers of America Chesapeake for, guys, going on this is my eighth or ninth year now. This is my third term, but um, um, you know, I've seen the uh, the beginning of the Leola Dorsey Center, you know, take shape and and to where it is today, and and um, you know, I feel good about that because of you know I do live in Howard County, and when you think about the the big footprint that Volunteers of America Chesapeake has, which includes you know Maryland, Baltimore, uh, D.C., Northern Virginia, now the Carolinas, uh, the Leola Dorsey Center is our is our first and only uh you know asset footprint in Howard County and it serves it's a great purpose and and actually met um was there took a tour probably a few months ago and and uh but it's a it's um so, so anyway I'm I'm proud of that and 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 happy to 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 um to share and and contribute thanks Kyle thanks again for being here so next, what I'm going to do is provide, uh, and Kyle, that was a perfect segue, because I'm going to provide a brief overview of VOACC in general, and then we'll jump right into Layla Dorsey. I often like to do this because a lot of people tend to not be familiar with our work. Um, I like to say we are um, kind of the human services best kept secret <laughs> because we have a really large footprint. Um, but we kind of work behind the scenes, and so not too many people know about us. But uh, we, again, are Volunteers of America Chesapeake and Carolinas. We are one of over 30 affiliates of Volunteers of America, which is a national health and human services organization. And we started in 1896. So 2021 actually marks our 125th anniversary which we're super excited about. Um, our founders, uh, Maude and Ballington Booth, actually started with the Salvation Army when they were first uh, launching over here in the United States. And they decided to kind of break off and make their own nonprofit. So we have very close ties to the Salvation Army. We currently operate over 49 programs that specialize in seven key areas. So homeless services is a big area for us. We have homeless shelters and rapid rehousing programs, primarily in the Northern Virginia area and North Carolina. Intellectual developmental disability services is a big area for us. We provide in-home support, uh, medication management, community integration for those uh, living with a disability. And those services are primarily in the Virginia and DC areas. Behavioral health is a big area for us as well. We actually have two VOA HOPE centers, which are certified uh, community behavioral health clinics. Uh, one of them is in Maryland, and then the other one is in DC. And the whole 
way that that works is in addition to behavioral health, we provide primary care. So we take this whole person approach to helping those living with a severe mental illness. Substance use recovery is a big area for us as well. We actually have a program in Northern Virginia uh, located in Woodbridge, but also serving the Arlington area that specializes in substance use recovery for low-income individuals. Supportive housing is huge for us. Volunteers of America is actually one of the largest affordable housing developers in the country. And in the Chesapeake and Carolinas affiliate, we have over 500 units of affordable housing that we provide to low-income individuals and families. Now we call it supportive housing because we also provide on-site services that help ensure those residents remain independent. Community reentry is a big area for, for us. Um, some of you may or may not know, but we have the only federal reentry center uh, in Maryland. It's located in Baltimore, and it is the second largest federal reentry center in the country. We served actually this past year over 3,000 men and women uh, returning from the federal system. And the whole goal there is to help them restart their lives so they don't reoffend and end up back in the system. And then finally, veteran services. Uh, this is kind of our bread and butter. I like to let people know that some of our very first clients were actually veterans of the Civil War. That just goes to show how long we've been around. So we help veterans find housing, uh, and not just veterans, also their families. So housing, employment, whatever they need to be independent. And these services are primarily in the Virginia and the North Carolina area. So that's just a little bit about us, but people are uh, typically amazed whenever I give that overview. I wanted to add to that a little bit to just kind of better illustrate the breadth of the impact we have in the community. In 2020, we actually served over 11,400 men, women, and children across all of our regions. And you can see that 4,000 of those were in our homeless services programs. About 1,200 were veterans. Nearly 3,000 were ex-offenders. About 650 were families and individuals uh, who are in our permanent supportive housing. A little over 2,000, um, uh, oh, I mentioned veterans. So I meant 1,200 received behavioral health and primary care support. 2,000 were veterans and families that we served. Almost 200 were individuals uh, recovering from addiction. 175 were adults and youth who received training for in-demand jobs. And about 150 were adults living with intellectual developmental disabilities. So today we're gonna to be talking specifically about Howard County and the Leola Dorsey program. So one of the things that I wanted to do um, is test your knowledge on how well you understand homelessness in Howard County. Uh, the question is, and uh, you can use the chat to input your answer, uh, how many people on any given night uh, of the year in 2019 do you think were homeless in Howard County? So I'll give you a moment to use the chat uh, and put input your numbers, and then I'll share uh, what it actually was after that. Okay, I see 360, 500, 200, 350, 750. These are all really great numbers. 250, 575. I sense that at least some of you have been doing your, your research. 75, okay, perfect. Thank you for that. So in 2019, there were actually 201 homeless individuals in Howard County on any given night of the year. And this represents a 20% increase from 2018. Now, some of you may know uh, that the continuum of care will often do a point in time count every year. 
So we don't yet know the numbers for uh, 2020 and, and 2021, but we know given the pandemic that this number has gone up because it's gone up all across the country. Uh, the economic effects of the pandemic uh, have definitely uh, disproportionately affected uh, low-income communities in need. And you can kind of see the breakdown to the right there. So of, that, of those 201 individuals, 74 were sheltered um, with families. So maybe they were staying on somebody's couch or something like that. 29, though, were unsheltered with families. So these are families that um, are either living out on the street uh, or they're just getting into a shelter. Um, so about 29 um, actually don't have a roof over their heads. 55 were sheltered individuals, so adults without families. And 43 uh, were unsheltered individuals, so living on the street or trying to make their way to a shelter. So now I'm going to hand it over to Jennifer, who's going to talk about Layola Dorsey and how this program is designed to address that homelessness issue in Howard County. Go ahead, Jennifer. As, as I said earlier, I am case manager and I work at Leola Dorsey. Um, in about 2018, Leola Dorsey was built and the purpose of the building is twofold. Um, the second and the third floor are permanent supportive housing units that are operated and run by VOACC. And the bottom floor is a day resource center that is operated by grassroots. So um, everything that we do, um, we collaborate on, which is pretty exciting. So currently um, we have 34 residents living at um, Leola Dorsey. We have one vacancy right now. Um, Everybody who is referred to the old Dorsey from the continuum of care um, meets the disability criteria. So we have pretty much everyone has some sort of disability. Um, a lot of the folks there um, were veterans at one point. Um, and I would say that the vast majority are over 50, although we have a couple younger people. Everyone is a single adult. Um, our units at Leola Dorsey are efficiency apartments, so um, they are kind of small. Um, what I do is I work with every single person that lives at Leola Dorsey, and my goal is um, to keep them housed and to link them with whatever services that they need. So, for example, um, this morning, um, before this, I've already been out um, taking a gentleman to court um, so that he can make sure that he, he got there on time and was able to fulfill that. Um, I've been working with several folks lately on applying for disability benefits. So to make sure that their income is increased and they're able to support themselves. Um, some of the, the bigger issues that folks are facing at Leola Dorsey is that we see a lot of folks that are struggle with mental health issues and with substance use issues. Because Leola Dorsey operates with a um, housing first philosophy, that means that we keep the barriers as low as possible for people to come in and stay housed. And then once they're in, we offer them services. Um, so you, you still see a lot of people who um, are continue to um, use substances once they're housed. So, but we are um, working with them on um, on getting clean. Although it's difficult to, um, when their neighbors, in such close proximity, are also using. Um, I would say though that uh, despite that, um, because everybody is is housed, you're seeing a much higher level of functioning um, amongst the population. I would just like to add there that um, the folks that live at Leola Dorsey come from all different kinds of backgrounds and stories, and they are all very unique individuals, and they are 
collectively, it is a very kind, caring community. Uh, the folks that live there really look out for, for their neighbors um, that live there. Many of them have known each other for, for years and years. Um, they may have camped together or have known each other before they were housed. Um, so for me, it, going to work with these folks has been a real um, a blessing and an honor. So I, I would just like to add that. Um, Nicole, is there anything else that you'd like me to add? No, we'll, no. we'll move on to the next slide um, where we'll talk go into greater depth about uh, the amenities. So at Leo Dorsey, um, we have a few amenities there. So we do have laundry on site for folks. We also have a community room. Um, in that community room, we have a library. And what I do in the community room is that one of my goals is just to increase a sense of community amongst the residents there. So um, every few weeks, I like to host a, a luncheon and I invite all the folks and we come in and share a meal together. And it's just an opportunity to, to socialize and to, to hang out and have a good time. Often we'll do movies. Um, I've hosted um, group meetings in there as well. Um, outside, um, we have like a center courtyard where folks can hang out and also a picnic area um, behind the building. And as I mentioned before, the Grassroots um, Day Resource Center is co-located with us. And that is such a huge additional resource um, for our residents. They're able to access the Day Resource Center. Um, they're able to get food, additional food to supplement um, what they can get from the, their, most of them receive SNAP benefits. And I also make sure that they're able to access the food bank, but they're also able to receive food from the Day Resource Center. The Day Resource Center also has clothing, they have um, medical services on site. So a lot of our folks um, will go down there and see Dr. G. They've also been great at um, making sure that our residents have been vaccinated against COVID or flu shots and, and all of that. So um, they're, they're a real joy to work with. This is a photograph of one of the efficiency apartments that we have. As you can see, they've, they've, there's a kitchen area in there. They have oven, microwave, dishwasher, refrigerator. It's, it is a small area, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's definitely better than um, being in a tent out on the street and being warm. But I would say that um, the, the, the size is small. So there's a small kitchen area. And I think the next slide, if you can move forward. Um, shows that there's space for a bed. Some folks have it um, decorated um, with a love seat um, and they're able to adjust that with their TV and everything. Other folks who might have a lot of storage might bring in their storage and have a, a much smaller living area in there. We do um, monthly inspections just to make sure everybody is keeping it safe and sound. And again, everybody has a shower and their own bathroom. So going into some of the specific services that we provide at Leola Dorsey, um, case management, that's really the, the bread and butter of, of what I do. Um, I endeavor to meet with everybody at least um, on a monthly basis. Some folks I see, you know, three or four times a week, they might stop in and say hello and um, let me know what's going on in their life. Um, regarding mental health and substance use services, um, there's a probably about, I'd say like 30 to 40% of the folks uh, participate in the um, PRP, the Psychiatric Rehabilitation Program that we have on site. Many of our folks receive additional mental health services through the VOA Hope Center, and that would be um, therapy and medication management. I, some folks choose to get their mental health services um, 
outside of VOA and that's fine. I often make referrals to Shepard Pratt um, or other individual um, therapists in the area. We also um, work with grassroots, again, for substance use services. Um, I referred a number of folks to their new beginnings programs um, for inpatient or outpatient substance use um, treatment. Uh, VOA is also working hard to get our own um, substance use services into Leola Dorsey and all of the sites. Um, regarding benefits assistance, I, we assist our folks in applying for SNAP, for Medicaid, for Social Security, for TDAP. Um, all of that is, is a big issue um, because a lot of these have gone on and have chosen to do online benefits um, programs. A lot of our folks are not internet savvy, so they do need um, a lot of assistance with that. Um, regarding employment assistance, um, I do help folks um, with their resumes. I often um, give them information about various um, job fairs in the area and help them get connected and provide support for that. Um, financial literacy classes, yes. Um, so I, that's something that has kind of gone by the wayside during um, COVID because we couldn't get folks out to do that. But I'm working with making change to get folks out there to be able to help our people with that. Um, life skills training, that's an everyday thing at Leola Dorsey. You know, like everybody has a, has a different level of functioning and some of them are just you know, know exactly what to do. Some folks have trouble being good neighbors to each other, um, just noise, things like that. So, you know, we work individually with those folks to try to address that. Regarding um, health education and screenings, um, a lot of our folks get their um, primary care through the VOA Hope Center but we also refer out to, to local doctors and we ensure that they're able to get to and from their appointments. Um, I often make referrals to various transportation services to make sure that can happen. And then lastly, it speaks again about the psychiatric rehabilitation program. So that's a, a program that uh, folks that live at Leola Dorsey who may have um, more intensive mental health diagnosis is, um, can participate in and get additional extra um, help. So they would be meeting with their PRP counselor, hopefully like at least six times a month. And they can do various things like help with their, get their medication for them, take them to the doctors um, and just provide individual counseling and like work towards whatever goals they have. Move on. So, um, this speaks to how our how we're laid out staff wise so as you can see on here at the bottom i am case manager i'm supervised by the director of housing and homeless services through voa the director of housing and homeless services also supervises um, case managers at other permanent supportive housings throughout the baltimore area um, voacc contracts with Residential One as the property management company. And we have our property manager, Shakira, I think on the call today. Um, and she is awesome. And she handles like the day in and day out of collecting rents, of handling all of the, um, the issues with repairs and things like that. She makes sure all of that is running smoothly. Um, and again, that that is a partnership between um, us and Residential One, and she and I um, work together a lot to make sure everything is running smoothly. The other um, staff that we have on site is our PRP worker. And so she's also on site um, several days a week um, to meet with our folks one-on-one. -on -one. We can move on. So um, Nicole asked me to try to give you a few um, statistics about what we do so you can have some numbers here. 
I am not a particular um, numbers person, that's why I'm a social worker, but um, I'm gonna give it to you. So within the last year, there have been 40 men and women housed at um, the Old Dorsey. And you can see from that number that even though we only have like 35 units, that there have been some people that have come and gone. Um, some of those folks have moved on to other permanent housing. Some of them have needed higher levels of care and have moved on to those higher levels of care. And that's why you see those numbers. Um, out of those 40 folks, we've had at least 20% of them have an increase in their income during that time. So that would be that they have either found employment, they may have found um, income by applying for SSI or TDAP or um, SNAP benefits. Some of them have been able to access unemployment benefits if they had lost a job. Currently, about 49% of our folks are connected to some kind of mental health services. And 30% of the residents are engaged in some kind of substance use um, disorder treatment. And that could be like um, medication assistance treatment. So they might go out and um, you get methadone um, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, depending on their situation. Um, some of them have gone to inpatient treatment and some of them just receive um, uh, group therapy at this point. Thank you. Awesome. So initially we were gonna have Ms. Viona um, come and chat with you about what her experience is, but um, instead we're gonna have Mr. Pat Murphy come today and he is with Shakira right now. And I don't think that they have a video camera, but I think he's willing to speak. Um, Pat, are you there? I am. Hi, Pat. <laughs> Thanks for agreeing to join us. Um, so like I was explaining to you yesterday, these kind of folks wanted to hear some information from you about how you came to live at Leola Dorsey and like what your experience has been so far. Yes, I came, I, I lived in Prince George County all my life. Uh, 2007, I became homeless. I can tell you that anything could happen to anyone at any given day. I wasn't expected to be homeless. Believe me, I do not want to be homeless, but issues happened in my life that caused me to be homeless. I ended up going to Frederick County, live with my sister. I lived with her for a year, she passed away. I had to leave her. I had to find another place to live, which was hard. I went to live with a, a friend of mine, and I lived in the basement for a while, and that it kind of did not work out. Uh, so when I left there, I went. I ended, up, I ended up going to Howard County. I heard Howard County was very, very good with homeless people, and did a lot had a lot of good things for us to be able to get things done. I ended up moving into an apartment over on a college road up there by the college, Howard County College. I lived with a bunch of people in a home. I had a little teeny room. That worked out for a while, and then he had some bed bug issues, and I had to leave. I left there. I, I had no other place to go. I didn't know what to do with my life. I mean, I was stuck. I've never lived in the woods. I've never lived in a shelter. I ended up in the woods. I ended up in a tent up in the woods, me and two other people that I know they're friends of mine, and we have to share tents, so whatever we had to do. Living in the woods is not a very fun time, believe me. I was not used to it. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to, how to handle much. I had no money, no income. I mean, you had to get up in the middle of the night, use the bathroom. It could be raining, pouring down cold, and, you know, and uh, no clothes. To, we can't wash clothes, no food to eat, you know, no, no showers. So it was cold, it was hot. So, uh, we lived there, and during the winter time, Howard County had a uh, shelter, a cold winter shelter. So we all three went to the cold winter shelter in the winter time. Which we, we went to churches in Howard County, and they took care of us and fed us. And only bad issue is we had to get up early in the morning, and we had nowhere to go in the morning. So then what happened? I heard the owner of Dorsey was going to open up, and uh, I said, "Well, this would be a great thing for me—a roof over my head, just a roof over my head. It's a very small place. I mean, I have." Christmas tree that's been up all year. I, I don't take it down. I have nowhere to store it. But I, I'm so happy to have a roof over my head, heat, 
air condition, a place for you to, oh, it's so nice to cook, uh, and do my clothes. So, and I have big neighbors. I have a really good neighbor. I'm on the third floor. I'm in room 307, which is a quiet floor, a really nice floor. But even everybody in the place is nice. I mean, uh, we all get along. We all have issues. We're all homeless, most of us, coming from places. And, but we all really try to get along with each other. We all know how each other is and how we all work. So then I moved in there. I was one of the first ones to ever move in. I was the first day I moved in there. I've been here since. Uh, uh, rent was rent's great. I mean, they take care of it. They help you if you need help on rent. And then uh, VOA. I can't tell you how much VOA has done for me. I mean, honestly, not just me. I can talk with everybody. Jennifer, Casey, uh, Shakira, all. Oh, Three of them has been so great here in the building for all of us. I mean, we can go to them anytime, they talk to us, whatever. I have all three of their phone numbers and call them. I have Jennifer tell you. I mean, I've called her many times at night. I've talked to call Casey. And we had to talk some issues or something came up. Uh, some of the things we've done in VLA, I, I can't name them all. We, like I said, we have Wednesday, we have a nice little get together. She has food up there, good food. I mean, Popeyes, we put the chicken. I mean, it was good. Uh, they have great food. Uh, she helped me. I can't tell you. And with the COVID-19 here, we can't really go places. Everything was locked. So, I mean, you couldn't go in. So, I wouldn't, I don't, I'm not a computer person. I'm really not. I mean, I don't know how to do a computer. So, but I got my social security done. Thank God for that. It helps me a lot. I have, uh, I go down there and talk to them about anything in my life. I mean, paperwork, unbelievable. Like I said, snap. Uh, if I need anything redone, if I have any questions, I'm, Jennifer sees us all, all the time. We knock on her door. She always welcomes us in. And if we can't get in here, she'll set up an appointment for us. My main, my really concern is how much they care about us. If I need a ride to a doctor's appointment, I really need to get to a doctor's, they'll be both of them glad to take us. I mean, we don't have to ask twice. Oh, okay, be outside at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll be there to take you. Uh, and that, that takes a lot to help us out. I had, uh, I had to get a uh, uh, test done, overnight sleep test done. I had to get uh, all kinds of, uh, uh, kind of colonoscopy. He took me, had to come pick me up. Uh, we talked about going to the store. We have to go to the store. They take a store run for us. We go to the food bank. Uh, you know, she's had, they had a, a program here for CPR. People to learn to do CPR, uh, drug programs here. And then I, I even got myself a, I never thought I'd have to get myself a, uh, I had a, uh, a really good therapist here. And I've had her for, since I've been here. And she's so good to me. And she, I, I did not want to leave, lose her. And she's great. She's helped us with a lot of issues, a lot of things. Like, again, we have her phone number. We can call her anytime we want to call her. Uh, just so many things. I, I mean, they're like a, a backup mother to all of us. They are. It, I mean, that's the truth. And not just, I'm not just talking for me. You can't go down the hallway, go out the door, and there's not somebody in Jennifer or Casey's office talking to them about some issue, something going on. I mean, they hear every issue there is. Every problem we have, we don't ever want to lose VLA. I don't know what will happen if we lose them because, like I said, they're like a backup parent mothers to us all. 